Welcome to Taijin's Kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make takoyaki. So this originally come from like a west part of Japan, like Osaka area, and spread out throughout Japan. And mostly in Japan, you would find like as a stand where they make right in front of you. And it's really fun to watch them make takoyaki right in front of you. It's so amazing, I think. And I think this is coming a little bit more popular uh, outside of Japan. I think there are a lot of Japanese restaurants where they serve this as a menu, but most of the time they don't make it there. Instead, they uh, serve from a frozen package. And today I'm going to show you how to make this yourself. And for this, you do need a special pan with a round circle holes in them. You could make with the same ingredients without this pan, but somehow it doesn't taste the same. Somehow this round bowl will give this authenticity. I don't know, maybe it's a feeling thing. Today I'm going to show you how to make this at home and maybe a little tips when you're making this. Then without further ado, let's get started. Here are the ingredients for making takoyaki. So here are the main part, taco, the octopus. I bought this frozen. You can buy this either frozen or fresh. Of course, when you can get this fresh, it's much better, but octopus is one of those ingredients that the quality doesn't really change when it gets frozen, so you can buy it either frozen or raw. And then I have all-purpose flour, an egg, and I have here three stalks of scallion. So for takoyaki, you wanna find a scallion that has a lot of the green part, so just like this. And also here I have what's called tenkasu. These are leftover crumbs from tempura. You can make this when you make tempura, when you have a little bit of leftover dough. But if you don't have this, it's also okay. You can make this without it. And I have here dashi powder. And also have here beni shoga, which is pickled ginger. So beni shoga is pickled in a different sauce than compared to pickled ginger in sushi. So you don't want to use that. Uh, those are called gari. If you don't have this, it's also not a big problem. You can make it without it. It'll just give a little kick to the flavor. And for the sauce, I'll be using okonomi sauce. If you can't find this, then I showed in another video of okonomiyaki where you can make a substitute of this using Worcestershire sauce and tomato ketchup. I'll also be using a little bit of Kewpie mayonnaise at the end. If you have just regular mayonnaise, that's also okay. But I think this Kewpie mayonnaise uh, matches takoyaki much better. And then I also have a lot of bonito flakes and aonori, which means a blue nori. If you don't have these, it's not a big problem, but if you can find these, then it'll just add a little layer to the flavor. And I'm also going to be showing another variation of the sauce with ponzu sauce. I'll be making ponzu sauce with lemon juice and soy sauce. It's also a new thing in Japan that lasts like 10 years or so that people start eating takoyaku with ponzu sauce. And I'll be showing that also because these are much more accessible outside of Japan. Today I'll be making takoyaki with these takoyaki plate takoyaki pan. This is manufactured by Iwatani. I highly recommend using this. I'll put the link in the description. So this Iwatani takoyaki plate has three great features. One, it's a non-stick Teflon coated, so it's much easier to roll. And secondly, this has these slits here. When you let the skewers run along this line, then you can easily separate the pieces for each bowls. And then lastly, they have these slits here that fits greatly to a stove when you have a gas stove. This is a bit hard to use when you have an electric stove, but uh, if you have a gas stove, then this is highly recommended. Or also you can buy like this, where it's incorporated with a heater. Uh, some of them don't have strong enough heater, so you just kind of have to play around with it. But if you want to make takoyaki, then you need to have these. Then let's start cooking. So I'm going to first boil the octopus. If you have a boiled octopus, then you don't have to do this. So in boiling water, I'm going to put a little bit of salt, about one teaspoon or so. And then just put the octopus right in here. For takoyaki, you don't need to cook the octopus for that long, since it's going to be cooked again in the pan. So about two minutes after coming to a boil is enough. But if you're eating like this, then you might want to cook uh, thoroughly for like five minutes or so. And take this out. And then here you have beautifully cooked octopus. I'm gonna cut up the octopus in kind of small pieces because I like to put two pieces in each takoyaki uh, so that when you cut them in half and eat them, each side will have a piece of octopus. So there's no really specific way to cut this. I'm just gonna cut it kind of like this in small pieces like this. Kind of diagonal like this. When you have a big piece like this, you can just kind of cut it in half. And for takoyaki, depending on the size of the octopus, when you have a big octopus leg like this, one leg is enough for one to two people. So 
so the octopus is ready. Then let's cut up the scallion. Take the end part off. And just want to try to cut this in small pieces. Doesn't have to be that extremely thin, but just as small as possible. If you can cut this small, then of course it's not a big problem. Um, just try to cut as thin as possible. Smaller pieces is just easier to be cooked. And this might seem quite a lot of scallion, but don't worry, when you cook them, they'll just shrink. So don't be stingy on the scallion because they just give out a lot of umami. Next, I'm gonna cut up the beni shoga. So for takoyaki, you don't need a lot of beni shoga. Probably just about like a tablespoon worth is enough. You don't want to put in too much beni shoga because it has a quite dominant flavor. Just a little bit would add a little kick to it. So these small pieces are enough, so it just needs to be small so that it'll be evenly spread out. Next, I'm going to make the ponzu sauce. So I'm just going to squeeze a lemon. And measure this in a container. About a tablespoon, and one to one ratio with the soy sauce, so another tablespoon. And here we have the ponzu sauce. Then let's make the batter. So there are quite different variations of the recipe, and this is the version that I find easiest and the tastiest to make, but you just have to try yourself and find your own, what you like the best. Then for one portion, I'm gonna use one egg, and a cup of water, and then I'm gonna beat this first. And this I'm gonna put in 2.5 gram or half teaspoon of dashi powder. Uh, this is quite important that you have like a really flavorful batter, but if you don't have dashi powder, then you can skip this also. And also in here, a teaspoon of soy sauce. Uh, this is my variation. I like to put a little bit of saltiness in the batter, but I think usually people don't put this in, but I think it tastes better in the end result. And in this, I'm gonna put in about 70 to 80 gram of all-purpose flour. So the amount of flour varies recipe to recipe because when you have more flour, then it's easy to make the form, but with less flour, then you enjoy the flavor of uh, octopus and other ingredients. So uh, just try out your own. If, if you think it's too difficult to make the form, then add a little more flour to the batter. If you wanna enjoy more of the flavor of the ingredients, then less flour. And also, if you don't have these tenkasu, then you need more flour. So if you have tenkasu, then 70 gram. If you don't have tenkasu, then 80 gram of flour. And for the flour, a tablespoon is about 10 grams. So I'm gonna put in seven tablespoons of flour. Oh, I forgot. You might want to use a strainer like this to get rid of the lumps of the flour. So this is finished for the batter. So you may think this is way too soupy, but when you put in other ingredients and when you start cooking, then this is actually perfect. Then let's start cooking the takoyaki. So like I said, this iwatani plate has these slits on the edges. So this fits perfectly on a stove, but unfortunately my stove has this way, so I have to place it in this direction. And so I'm gonna turn the camera around. Then I'm gonna turn the heat to high and heat up the pan. And once the pan has been heated, I'm gonna turn the heat to medium. And then here I'm gonna put in some oil. Today I'm gonna to be using sesame oil, but any frying oil will do. And you don't wanna be stingy with the oil, otherwise the dough will stick to the pan. And then you wanna use like a paper towel like this to spread out the oil evenly. And once the pan is good heated, I'm gonna put in the dough. So that's the perfect amount. And then I'm gonna put in the scallions over it. Just kind of evenly. And you wanna leave a little bit for the condiments at the end. And then tenkasu. And then the beni shoga. And then I'm gonna put in two small pieces of taco at the end. So now I'm gonna use a wooden skewer, or if you have a plastic skewer, it's also okay, but never use a metal skewer when you have a non-stick pan. What I'm first gonna do is run across along this line to separate two sections. 
And then what you want to do is kind of scooping motion like this. Try to put this in and like this. Oh, perfect, looking great. Try to put things in here like this. Oh, looking perfect. Roll like this. So what you want to do is you want to stick this in and roll around like this. So I'm going to show you again. So you want to try to put the edges right inside and then stick this in and then roll. Stick this in and roll. Stick this in and roll. So first you don't need to roll the whole way. Just roll it halfway like this and try to put this inside here like this. So once you're all the way around, you wanna keep rolling this like this. Try to tuck in all the ingredients in here and you're just gonna poke it and around. Try to tuck in everything in here and then poke and around. Just try to tuck in everything. Also here, tuck it in, poke and around. Tuck it in, tuck it in, tuck it in, tuck it in, poke and then around. Tuck it in, tuck it in, poke it and around. And just kind of keep rolling like this and cook all the way through for about five minutes or so. So this is looking perfect. Look how perfectly round and crunchy looking. But don't worry if you can't make it like this in the first try. It took me a while for me to master this as well. But I do highly recommend using this Iwatani takoyaki plate. It made me so much easier to make these takoyaki. Then let's put these on a plate. And here I have the perfectly made takoyaki. So this one I'm gonna top it with okonomi sauce. So I'm gonna put in the okonomi sauce like this. Now a little bit of kewpie mayonnaise. And then a little bit of aul nori. Or if you don't have this, it's also not a problem. And lastly, bonito flakes. If you don't have this, it's also okay. And then the other one I'm gonna top it with scallion. Then these are finished, let's eat. Mmm, oh, it smells so great. Oh, I'm starving. Let's eat. Itadakimasu. So let's dig in. So be very careful when you're eating okonomiyaki. It's very, very hot inside. I advise you to cut it in half and then eat it like that. Itadakimasu. Mmm, mmm, totally great. Mmm, 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 mmm. Oh, this is just heavenly great. Mmm, mmm. This is why I like to put in two small pieces of taco, the octopus, so that each side would have a piece of the octopus. Mmm, 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 mmm. Mm. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, it's just like really home flavor. So it's really difficult to point out what's the dominant flavor. It's definitely the okonomi sauce, but everything together, scallion, egg, the bonito flakes at the end, or a little kick from the ginger, and all together in a great harmony. They don't clash at all. They're just kind of coming all together. It's a great combination of flavor. Mmm. So you may be wondering why I have a bottle of rice. For people living in the east part of Japan, takoyaki is the main dish. You don't need anything else, you just eat takoyaki. But for people who are living in the west part of Japan, takoyaki is a side dish for rice. That's also why I eat yakisoba or okonomiyaki with rice. Mm. This okonomi sauce matches rice so perfectly. Mm. And now let's try with the ponzu sauce. Scallion like this. Like this. Mmm. So the okonomiyaki with ponzu sauce is also great. Oh, it's got freshness to it. Mmm. So whenever I make takoyaki like this, I always have two sauces so that I don't get bored with one sauce. Mmm. Also a great match with the takoyaki. Mmm.
And there's also a way to eat takoyaki with just soy sauce. So I'm gonna try that as well. Mm. Mm, this is also great. Mm. Not too much, just a couple drops. Mm. So soy sauce goes also really well with the takoyaki. And then once it gets a little cooled off, then you can eat the whole thing. Mmm, mm. so totally great. Mm. Oh, that was totally delicious, totally savory. Gososomashita. <laughs> oh, that was delicious. So it was a little bit of work and you need quite a lot of ingredients to make this, but it is definitely worth it. And if you don't want to get that many different kind of ingredients, then you can essentially make it with egg, flour, scallion, and the octopus. It will not have the same complexity, but nonetheless, it's an easy version. And if you don't want to put an octopus, you can also make it with different kind of meat or like sausage, or you can also put in some cheese or different kind of ingredients in there. You can also be very creative with this. So I hope you give this a try. If you like what you saw, please hit that like button and I look forward to see you in the next video. Bye.